There are hundreds of issues in climate science that deserve recognition, and more importantly, criticism to correct what is delivered to us in a politicized propaganda. But the two most important ones in the affirmative causation of climate change sector, and that would be rather than the erroneous claims about CO2 and other things, would be volcanoes and the relationship between the sun and earth modulated by the magnetic field. We recently hit the big volcano news that the top scientists in the world are now saying that volcanic impacts are likely vastly underestimated in modern climate models. So let's unpack that a bit here. This is the volcanic cooling release that is used in modern climate models, covering the same time period that they choose for temperature monitoring as well. So what's the problem with that? Well, we have both temperature and volcanic evidence going back much further in time. It just doesn't make their story look too good. This is the data for volcanoes, and the green bracketed area on the right is the time used for climate models, the modern measuring stick. As you can see, that is not really a representative sample for the Earth. Volcanoes can do much more than the climate models suggest, and beyond that, the last mega warming period was in the first millennium AD, while major cooling occurred from the 1300s until about 1850. Then, the volcanic cooling disappeared and the planet has gotten warmer. Not really the message they want to send, but there's more. Because when the volcanoes cut our atmosphere a break, at the same time, Earth's magnetic field began its modern pole shift and weakening of magnetic protection of the planet. That means more solar energy entering the system at the same time as our natural cooling mechanism minimized. And it goes well beyond sunlight. As we saw last month, the major study on solar climate forcing showed that about 80% of the sun's impact on climate is not related to irradiance, sunlight, but to the particle forcing and magnetic fields. The protons, electrons, their direct joule heating of the atmosphere, and their ozone destruction, which does let in more irradiance heating. The primary climate effect of the weakening magnetic field is its effect on the ozone, where those more particles that are penetrating into the atmosphere are causing a decline in the ozone and a thinning, which causes those cascading impacts. That is a double whammy that more than fully explains modern global warming, or at least it would if they would let it into the modeling, which they don't. Again, there are a lot of other items to cover in the climate debate. The problems with focusing on CO2, the ocean uptake, lagged forcing, cloud impact uncertainty, not to mention the uncertainty with aerosols. But from that affirmative causation standpoint, volcanoes are a big one. They aren't represented well in the models, and when we look at the actual data, it's clear they really, really should be, especially with the timing of the warming and cooling periods. Furthermore, as they recently diminished and stopped cooling the atmosphere, the planetary magnetic field began letting in more solar energy, which we are learning has ever important impacts on the climate through both direct and indirect means. If you can't dive deep into the hundreds of aspects of the climate discussion, at least remember these two things, volcanoes and the magnetic shift of Earth as it relates to the sun. I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.